For BlizzCon, I decided to fix up Hogger and upgrade parts of him that previously bothered me. And in the process, I discovered a game changer for cosplaying monsters, but not without quite a few challenges, one that almost ruined my entire plan. Stay tuned to see him go from this to this. Hi, I'm Kazool, and welcome to my lair. So it's no secret that I've been struggling with my health. Um, things just never really got better after my pregnancy four years ago. And in fact, they kept getting worse no matter what I did. Rapidly increasing pain, food sensitivities, vertigo, rashes, extreme fatigue, extreme brain fog, you name it. Well, after banging down the doors of many doctors, I finally figured out why. I have ankylosing spondylitis, and don't worry, I'd never heard about it before I was diagnosed with it either. It's an autoimmune condition where my immune system is attacking my spine and SI joints in an attempt to fuse it all together. Fun, right? But once I started taking medication to help me keep the inflammation down, I was able to make some lifestyle changes to also support myself, like going to the gym, doing yoga, meditation, cold plunges, and removing things from my diet that I found to be triggers for the pain. And things have been improving. Everything isn't, isn't perfect. I still have flare-ups that bring back all the bad symptoms, but I do have a lot of good days now where I feel like my old self again. Um, I have energy to get things done, and like even with that, I have a lot of big hurdles to overcome to do what I love, but I'll still be trying. So BlizzCon happened in November and it's back in person for the first time since COVID. And I really wanted to do some cosplaying, but with the late announcement of the dates and the challenges that I've been facing personally, I knew that I could absolutely not make a new project. So I decided to go back and give a facelift to one of my old projects. I decided that Hogger was my best candidate because he was so loved by me and the community. And if I'm being honest, there was a lot of things that I rushed on him and I wasn't happy at all how they turned out. Uh, so this was my chance to bring him to the final form, the vision of what I had in my mind when I first started building him. I made a lot of videos detailing how I built him. So if you're new around here or just want to remember, cause it was quite a while ago, Here's a playlist of all my Hogger videos. I started with the easiest task to kind of ease myself into the project and give myself an easy win. The creature cast rubber that I used on his nose and lips and teeth had shrunk just enough for the clear coat to fall off. So with a little masking tape, I re-shinied them with some clear gloss coat. It was super quick and made a huge difference. Another easy task was cutting a bigger vision hole in Hogger's neck. The vision hole was the worst part of the original by far, where I only had about a three by five inch hole to see out of. The new hole is closer to like eight and a half to nine by nine. And I didn't even bother adding a screen or anything to hide it uh, because hardly anybody noticed the bottom of his neck anyways. Um, the airflow was also great to have and it's, Okay, I admit, it's still hard to navigate in Hogger, but the bigger hole made it a whole lot easier. Then I moved on to his legs. I still love how they move, but with age and the weight that they were carrying, they were starting to get wobbly. If you remember, I had built the bones of the legs out of layers of EVA foam glued together. I performed minor surgery on his legs to add some acetal rods in the middle for strength. It was a little bit tricky, but with the help of some zip ties, I got the bones as rigid as I needed them to be. In the future, if I do more legs like this, I will 100% use rods from the start. Next up was the arms. I was never really happy with how the original arms came out and they were definitely rushed and I didn't have any time to try again before BlizzCon. 
Uh, so I started by going back to my scale model with the clay figure of figuring out how I wanted them to sit on the body and connect to the neck. I didn't have the original sculpt anymore, so I just approximated it with my new figure. After I was happy with the shapes, I removed the arm from the scale model and re-sculpted a little bit where the arm was uh, so I could take the pattern easier. I took the pattern like I normally do with masking tape and used my projector to scale it up. Now I want to talk a little bit about a trick I tried when scaling up these arms. I was intending to build them out of one inch dry fast foam and whenever you use a thick material there will be some distortion. Let me demonstrate. So if you take a tailor's tape and put it around the biggest part of my forearm, it comes out to nine inches. But if we use a thicker material, like this ruler that I've created on a piece of EVA foam, this is 10 millimeter EVA foam, and wrap it around the same place on my arm, it is closer to 10 and a half inches. Furthermore, if I take the original nine inch measurement from my tailor's tape and put it on the EVA foam um, and then try to put it on my arm, now my arm, it won't go over the biggest part of my arm because now there's extra material on the inside. Does that make sense? I've been thinking about this problem for years, like ever since I started scaling things from a model. And I even went as far as to try to figure out a math formula to see if I could help me. Uh, but I, I had a thought for an easy way to do this that I wanted to try and see if it worked here. After I scaled up the pattern, I removed a half inch, so half the thickness of my material from all edge of the pattern. Um, and to make sure that the outside part of the foam matched exactly the proportions on my scale model. And it seems to have worked. Um, I will have to go back and carve out some of the inside of the foam for the arm that my arm, that my actual arm fits into, but I was stoked with the results. I will be testing this technique more further to see if it works on more complex shapes, uh, but I, I wanted to share this with you and maybe it'll help you in your pattern making as well. I mirrored these foam shapes and then I gutted the old arms and here's where I came onto another big challenge. It had been a very long time since I built Hogger and the fur that I used for him was no longer available anywhere. I ordered some samples of some similar furs that were close, but none of them were quite the same. I did have quite a bit extra left off of the shoulders that we used to tuck into the vest to avoid there being a gap. And But with the arms being so much bigger now, I, I had this big wedge piece to fill in. Um, and I managed with some creative puzzle piece cutting and sewing to cover the arms completely with the original fur. Then I had to figure out a new way to mount the arms. Since I moved the shoulder position so drastically, I couldn't use the shoulder pad understructure that the old arms were hanging on. Um, I used three straps and clips onto the aluminum frame for the neck and that did the trick. And since the area was also covered by fur from the neck, I didn't have to worry about people seeing through the gaps. I just cut a small slit in the neck's neck fur for the straps to go through and it worked great. As great as this looked, it also caused a big problem down the road that I didn't realize until much later.
Next up was the pauldron. My original pauldron looked tiny on the old arms and it looked absolutely comical on the new arms. So I first tried building another one 30% bigger and it still looked small. So I went to 50% bigger and added a couple inches in the middle of the pattern to elongate the shape. I wish I could have gotten a final picture of the two pauldrons side by side, but I ended up giving the old pauldron to a friend who works at Blizzard to keep at her desk. I was starting to get a little tired of working on big, hard pieces, so I decided to focus on something a little more detail-oriented. Now, back when I first got home from winning BlizzCon, uh, I, I was getting all sorts of attention from all over the internet. It was honestly very overwhelming. But one company that reached out to me was VFX Creates. They wanted to send me their Puppet Master sound system so that I could add sound effects to Hogger. They sent me this system completely free, but I didn't sign any deal with them to promote it. I always felt bad about receiving this thing for free, especially since I didn't take the time to add it to Hogger until now. Um, but I'm going to give my honest opinions on the product and I will be leaving a link in the description, but it's not an affiliated link. I don't get any compensation for linking it, uh, but I want you to know about this thing because spoiler alert, I freaking love it. I'm more than sold on it and I'm determined to incorporate this into as many builds as possible in my future. I had to pull out my handholds and a lot of stuff in Hogger's head to make room for the control board. This was good because all that foam was starting to wear out and the glue wasn't holding as well anymore, so that was fine. Um, in the meantime, I tasked my husband with finding classic Knoll sounds and loading them onto the sound system box. Now this thing gets loud, and I was originally worried for my own ears, thinking that there would never be any way I'd have this thing on full volume. But at the convention, with all the chaotic noise, I found full volume to be just right. People could hear the sounds really clearly, and the sound box was in a place where it didn't add too much to the strain of my own ears. After having a blast with the sound, I got to the part of the build that I had been dreading fixing the vest. The shoulders were now in a drastically different position and much larger. I really didn't want to have to pattern and build a whole other vest. So I just tried cutting straight across the shoulder and adding in a new piece of faux leather. Luckily, I still had the exact material in my stash, so I didn't even have to buy more. It looked a little clunky at first, but with some finessing, I think I got it to work. I did have some trouble keeping it up on the shoulders, so I added some straps and Velcro to help hold them in place. I also decided to trim off the bottom of the vest since it had a lot of extra material there, which was a horrible idea, and we'll get to that later. It was on to the final tasks, doing a test fit and painting the pauldron. What even is cosplay if you don't spend the last night before leaving the convention painting it, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Walk too far. Well, I missed it. I could see what I'm doing. <laughs> His collar is like sliding up too far. Okay. 
I was so happy with the test fit, but I also caught a glimpse of a glaring issue that made it way more difficult to wear at the convention. But before we go over that part, I wanna talk about the great parts of the convention. The sound made it so much fun to play as Hogger. Seriously, this was a game changer. I had a blast scaring people with the growls and snarls, and then doing the classic hyena laugh at them when they would yelp. I had so much fun and I really lost track of time. I didn't even take a break for like six hours. The battery system, the, the battery and the sound system worked perfectly the whole time and my internal fan batteries lasted about five and a half hours, so it was great. Now let's get to the bad. There was a lot of confusion with, with the changes made to the community night now being on Saturday instead of Friday. And I really, really, really wanted to be in the big cosplay fountain photo shoot. And I was told the, the time wrong three different occasions. Three times I was told wrong what time it would be. So I ended up missing it. I cosplayed as Hogger on Friday, which was a mistake because most people would be in cosplay on Saturday, which I was really stressing about being able to get seats to see the cosplay contest live that I didn't want to do it on Saturday. Opening ceremonies was honestly a nightmare because we didn't win the lottery for being able to sit in the arena and there was not anywhere else good to sit and watch it. Uh, it was a terrible experience because we had to stand way too close to a random screen in the hall crowded around by other people because I'm too short to see it any other way. And Hogger takes so long to get in and out of that I didn't want that to keep me from getting a seat in the arena for the contest. <sighs> Sorry for the rant, but it was all really disheartening and stressful. Now back to that glaring issue from the full test. I had noticed from taking it on and off my dummy that my body was considerably different than when I had made my dummy. Some of the lifestyle changes that I'd made to help me with my ankylosing spondylitis was diet and going to the gym every day. And while I hadn't lost much weight-wise, the shape of my body was quite different, and it made everything about Hogger not quite fit right. In addition, moving the weight where the arms hung from shifted everything to be front-heavy. I tried tightening the straps, but it wasn't enough, and the whole costume was sliding around, making it hard to get good photos and perform. If you notice, in a lot of the photos, he seemed to be looking at the ground. The way I could have fixed that was to arch my back and lean, lean backwards some more. Uh, but that's where my mistake with the vest came in because I had cut off too much of the extra material and when I would lean back, it would show a huge gap in my midsection. We tried our best to manage what we could with safety pins. Uh, but the belt just wouldn't sit right, even cutting it to shrink it by several inches. Also, I didn't communicate clearly enough with my husband that I wanted him to do a photo shoot with me while wearing it at the con to get some good B-roll for this video, or even just good photos of Hogger in general for my collection. So that was my bad, and it's very just... As a side note, it's very disorienting being inside Hogger and I was concentrating on so many things that I forgot to like ask him or reiterate my want for those photos at the con. It's just my curse to not get good photos of my work. So that's just something I'll have to keep working on in the future. And the aftermath of the convention was unfortunately very bad for me. I had definitely pushed myself way too hard not only physically by doing some late night crunching to get ready and wearing a very straining costume for way too long, uh, but also mentally. Now that I'm working super hard on my mental health and stress levels as part, as, as part of managing my AS, I'm realizing that I actually have really bad anxiety and BlizzCon just felt so much more crowded and chaotic to me than it has in years past. I had a really bad flare-up after coming home from the convention with, along with holiday stress, took me 
what felt like over a month to recover from. So what now? I think overall it was a very positive experience for me to go back and give Hogger one more hurrah. Um, I'm in love with the new arms and how much the sound system improved him and the performance so much. I know he's not perfect, but I finally feel satisfied, content, and wholly proud of what I've done with him. It was also good to get a good benchmark on what I'm currently able to handle moving forward with my AS. I'm trying not to stress myself too much with promises of more and cooler things in the future, but I do promise that I won't be stopped from doing what I love. I started this channel to share my builds and all the tips that I come across to help lift the cosplay community as a whole, and that's not going to change. So thank you all for listening to me drone on way too long about Hogger and my personal woes, but I hope you got something out of it. I'm Kazool, reminding you to embrace your inner beast.